today we're comparing the best budget Z690 motherboards. I've been struggling to find a good cheap board for Intel 12 gen processor. There's just way too many. So I've done the smartest thing I can come up with and I bought three from Gigabyte, MSI and Asus. The looks. Number one thing you see when you browse for a product is the looks. The design, the aesthetics. Gigabyte Z690 UD is absolutely gorgeous. For just $189, you get a premium looking board with excellent I.O. It has dark to light gray color scheme. GPU slot is white that gives it a nice contrast. Heat sink is massive and gives the board a solid feel. I.O. shield is permanently attached. From every angle, the board means business. There is not a single LED that I can find, which I like like a lot. The looks of Gigabyte board gets 7 out of 10 score. MSI Pro Z690-A is a motherboard. Next up, just getting $494, you get a nice motherboard with neutral dark gray color tones. A bit boring. It has a cutout for SATA ports, which is a gimmick at the end of the day, but I guess it gives it a bit more character. Heatsink is somewhat small, but gets the job done. It covers all the power related components, which we'll get to in a second. IO Shield is attachable, detachable, separate. The look score is 5 out of 10. Asus Prime Z690-P Wi-Fi D4. This one is interesting. More expensive than the others at $219, but it has Wi-Fi 6. So if you're a loser that uses Wi-Fi for gaming, get this one or Wi-Fi version of the other ones. Now, this thing is cool. Very premium looking board. The heatsink is made of aluminum that makes it somewhat shiny. And I do like shiny things. The whole PCB is covered with these cool white stripes. Score is 7 out of 10. It would be 8 out of 10 if not for a detachable IO shield. Motherboard exists to connect all the components and provide them with power. Next, we're gonna look at VRM. These components give CPU power. Power comes with heat and that's why we have these huge heat sinks. Z690 chipset made for Intel 12th gen processor. It require enormous amount of power to run them. Unlike subscribe button, it doesn't need power at all. Just click it. Power delivery. So these boards are made for Intel 12th gen processor like this one, Intel i5 12600K. Unlike AMD, Intel has very stringent specifications that every manufacturer has to obey by when designing the board. Therefore, this guy is no slouch. Gigabyte Z690 UD has 16 VRM phases. 12 is crazy, but 16 is just absurd. All these phases are part of VRM. VRM makes voltage that CPU demands from 12 volts your power supply provides. In charge of organizing all these phases is PWM controller. This is the guy CPU talks to. Now these chunks of metal are there to dissipate the heat from all these VRM components. Let's talk about MOSFETs Gigabyte uses. They are 60 amps rated and made by OnSemi. During testing, these guys heated up to 60 C on the coupler is directly attached to the MOSFETs. 69C was reported from the sensor. You can see all these sensors using hardware info in Windows. Like I said before, in charge of all these SMDs is PWM controller. With this laser temperature gun, we observed 48C. Rule of thumb is to keep things under 120C, so there is plenty of room. If you want your motherboard to work for 10 years, keep things under 100C. With slight overclock, we can see 66C on the couplers, 75C reported in hardware info and 55c on pwm here's how many times i've said c so far you can tell the temps went up by simply looking at the power consumption intel i5 went from 87 watts to 130 watts of package power next up is msi z690-a vrm has 14 v core phases and 55 amps rated they made by aos during testing with 8064 on the coupler's temps were 43C. 55C was reported by the sensor. PWM controller only heated up to 30 Celsius. With some overclock, power consumption went up from 75 watts to 113 watts, which resulted in 55C on the couplers, 66C on the sensor. This is how many times I've said C at this point of the video. Asus motherboard. It has 14 V core phases made by Vichy Siliconics that are rated for 50 amps of current. 43C on the coupler, 49C reported, 40C on PWM controller. With some overclock with double power consumption from 72 watts to 155 watts. Wait. That's way more than MSI. Based on my research, most of you watching just slam basic overclock. I let the motherboard decide how to manage components. All core boost has been applied to all of them. So combination of what manufacturer bias wants to do with CPU brain resulted in 42 watt difference between MSI and Asus. Even though 155 watts 
watts of power consumption is kind of crazy. Temperature stayed cool on the coupler, 51C Celsius. Sensor reported 65C and PWM controller went up from 40C to 43C. Exceptional. Here's the chart for nerds from all the testing today. Gigabyte MOSFET 75C, MSI 66C, ASUS 66C. The hottest one out here is Gigabyte, 8 out of 10 score. MSI 9 out of 10. And ASUS gives the CPU the most juice without any manual tuning. So we'll give it 9.1 out of 10. It's a bonus for those who don't care about overclocking. Here's my recommendation. MSI Pro B660M-A. Just for $139, you get very capable motherboard with 12 V core phases instead of 14. However, 12 is crazy amount already. IO is good as well. Total of six USB ports, two display ports, two HDMI ports to drive total of four 4K monitors. Now back to the video. Input output. To differentiate top of the line Z690 chipset, Intel provides it with more PCIe lanes from the CPU. That's part of the reason why I choose Z690 motherboards. It comes with more connectivity. Gigabyte Z690, three M.2 ports, 4 USB 2.0, 4 USB 5 gig port, 1 10 gig port, and 1 USB C 20 gig port. It also has 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and this connector. If you know what it is, leave a comment. I want to see how many of you know. Make sure your M.2 SSD is NVMe and not ancient SATA, because this board only supports NVMe PCIe SSD, which is sad, like the fact that 100% of you watching are not subscribed. Please make me happy and subscribe. Love you. Gigabyte gets 6 out of 10 score. MSI Z690. IO is very interesting. It has four M.2 slots. Again, four M.2. The first two are PCIe 4.0, very fast. The last two are PCIe 3.0, which is not as fast. However, however, they support SATA protocol. So compatibility on this motherboard is quite amazing. This board has a little secret though. Let me introduce you to Tooless M.2 installation. At first I thought I broke something, but no, no, no. <laughs> this is what EZ M.2 clip looks like. This feature is only on Z690 motherboard. However, it will be available on all MSI motherboards in the future. MSI in the back is quite similar to a Gigabyte. We've got four USB 2.0, two 5 gig, one 10 gig USB, and 20 gig USB-C. Besides that, it features 2.5 Ethernet and ALC897 audio interface, just like the others. MSI gets 7 out of 10 score thanks to extra M.2 ports with SATA support. The last, not least, Asus Prime Z690-P. Port selection is good too. 2 USB 2.0, you don't need more than that. 2 USB 5 gig, 1 10 gig, 20 gig USB-C. All M.2 slots are very fast. PCIe 4.0. The last one is compatible with SATA M.2 as well. That's 7 out of 10. Asus is the winner with total score of 23.1 out of 30.